We'll start off talking about the origins, the immediate origins of the American Civil War. I mean, you can start in the first days of colonial settlement if you want to find origins of the Civil War, but we're not going to do that. We're going to start around 1850, the middle of the 19th century, but the first week we'll be looking back a little before that. We will look at the Civil War as a critical turning point in American history. Um, its conduct as a war, its impact on American life, particularly emphasizing the end of slavery, the emancipation of the four million slaves, and the consequences of that for North and South and the future of the United States. We will then look at Reconstruction, the period after the Civil War, um, as a struggle over the nature of the reunited nation and the legacy of slavery and its abolition. Now, as some of you know, this is a time period that I have devoted most of my career as a professional historian to. Um, the first history course I ever took at Columbia, long, long ago, I was an undergraduate, was a year-long seminar with a great teacher. None of you know who he was, but he was a wonderful teacher back then, James P. Shenton, on the, the coming of the Civil War, the Civil War Reconstruction. So it shows you what an inspiring teacher can do to kind of lock your interest into something which is still there 50 years later. My first book, Free Soil, Free Labor, Free Men, was about the Republican Party before the Civil War in the 1850s. The, the longest book I've ever written was about the Reconstruction period. Uh, this period was also a pivot in a book I wrote about the idea of freedom and its history in uh, the United States. Um, I wrote a book which is on the reading list about Abraham Lincoln and slavery, uh, his, the evolution of Lincoln's ideas and policies about slavery, which we will look at later on. And I'm just finishing a book right now on um, New York City and fugitive slaves and the Underground Railroad. What happened to fugitive slaves who escaped to New York City? Who helped them? Where they went to? I'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to the fugitive slave issue. The Civil War Reconstruction era is fascinating for many reasons, but one is that it raised questions that are still utterly relevant in American life today. Uh, what is the definition of freedom and of equality in this country? What is the relationship between force and consent in achieving social change? Uh, pick up today's newspapers or look at them online and you will find Civil War era issues right now. This is not just the dead past. War and civil liberties, right? What, in a, in a military kind of era, what, what, what are the rights of the individual as opposed to governmental demands for security, etc.? What about the intersections of principle and compromise in politics? We're debating that all the time in Washington. They debated that in the 1850s very intensely also. Who is an American? Who should be a citizen of this country? That's a pretty hot issue today. That is a Civil War Reconstruction issue. Um, what about racial equality? What is it? Is it possible? What are the means necessary to achieve it? That's an issue of that, of that time period. What about terrorism? This was the period of the first American experience with widespread terrorism, not from abroad, but homegrown terrorism. I'm talking about the Ku Klux Klan and groups like that. We will talk about that when we get to Reconstruction. How does a government or should a government deal with instances of terrorism? And perhaps in more than in other periods of American history, as we will see, the findings, the arguments, the opinions of historians matter. They have a practice. What historians say about this period has a practical import on our life. It's not just an abstract intellectual debate. Uh, so, for example, changing, and we'll talk about this, changing views of Reconstruction had a tremendous impact on what is sometimes called the Second Reconstruction, the Civil Rights Revolution of the 1960s. Um, an earlier view of that period. Uh, as one of rampant misgovernment and corruption was used, uh, that idea developed right here at Columbia University in around 1900 or so. Uh, that old view of Reconstruction 
was used to justify the exclusion of, Southern, of black people in the South from political rights and to justify the system of segregation. The alleged horrors of Reconstruction legitimated the Jim Crow system in the South. So as I say, a view of history had direct practical bearing on people, not just in terms of uh, academic discourse. 